everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Networking with Michelle. Today we have Lamar and Ronnie Tyler. The two of them have started Tyler New Media, a full service media firm with one of the leading blogs called blackandmarriedwithkids.com. Lamar is the author of The Gatekeepers Are Gone, Hustle Plus Technology Equals Success. They also do keynote speeches together, and they're definitely a couple, a power couple, a force to be reckoned with. So I want to welcome Lamar and Ronnie today. Thank you for taking time to join the show. Welcome Ronnie and Lamar Tyler. Good. Thank you for having us, Michelle. Thank you. Absolutely. So, uh, of course, I've been blessed with your service so far just by the Facebook group. I had a chance to actually meet you a couple of weeks ago at the Blogging Wild Brown conference. But if you can just take a moment to give the audience some background information on how you got started and what you're currently doing today. Sure. Well, uh, we started a blog. So it all started with our blog in December of 2007. And we were uh, speaking with each other about creating a blog and something we were passionate about. So we said, what's that, that thing that we're passionate about? So if it takes off four or five years from now, we'll still be excited about it. It won't feel like we just created another job for ourselves. And what it was was relationships. And more specifically um, than just relationships or, or family, it was marriage and the way marriage was portrayed in the African-American community. So we created the site blackandmarriedwithkids.com to promote positive images of marriage in the African-American community. And it just uh, pretty much took off, you know, and it grew and, and people were attracted to the mission. We often say it's not just a website, it's a movement. And from then, we've grown from the website to doing documentary films around topics like marriage and family. We have a, a new documentary coming out about generational wealth in the African-American community. And now we've even grown the business to a point where I actually coach and consult other small business owners and entrepreneurs on how they can take their business to the next level by using online marketing. So it's really been a, a journey of growing this movement. And we still think we're at the bottom of the mountain where we can <laughs> take this thing. So, I mean, we're, we're still excited about it. Wake up excited every day. I tell Ronnie, don't go to sleep at night. You know, it's, it's, you don't need to get out that bed, girl. You know, let's jump into this thing. We're excited still. It's wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> so... I mean, there's so many directions I can go right now. I got so many questions. So that's, it's been about seven years since you started the blog. Yes. Thing. yes so is. do you think your excitement comes from the passion? Like, how do you keep just going every day? Like without the money, how do you just like, you know, we got to keep doing this. I mean, I think our excitement comes from our mission as well. Right. So we're doing something that we're passionate about. And then we're actually seeing the results. We're getting the feedback from people and from couples that said, you know what? Today I was going to give up on my marriage, but I read something on your site. I was able to see one of your movies and it, it inspired me to keep trying. It gave me some different perspectives to try in my marriage. And so things like that, as far as our mission to uplift and support marriages in our community, I think that ultimately keeps us going. Even on those days where it gets hard and you're tired from no sleep, Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think uh, that type of feedback really helps to keep us fuel. If I could just add into that, this is where our three P's come in. So we always talk about our three P's and I'm, I'm a big fan of the profit. So my three P's are different from <laughs> Marcus's three P's. But we always say we followed our passion. We discovered our purpose. And then as a byproduct, you know, we found out how to create a profit from it. And all of those P's are important because the passion is what drives us. And the passion is what first got us into this thing. And that's what had us basically working the whole entirely new nine to five after we got done with our real nine to fives and we were just starting out. Now the purpose is what keeps us tuned in and keeps us knowing that we're doing the work that we should be doing and the work that we were put on this earth to do. But the profit is also important because I always say the profit sustains the first two, your passion and your purpose. And without the profit, then a lot of people find themselves working nine to five jobs that they hate. They find themselves doing all these odds and ends and other activities that they know they probably shouldn't be doing because it's distracting and taking away from their passion and purpose. So we really think we have uh, walked into our three P's, passion, purpose, and profit. And now, like I said, you know, not only have we walked into it, but we like to help other people learn how they can walk into it as well. What point did you discover those three P's? Was that before the website or during the website? Yeah, I definitely think it was during the process. Okay. You know, I, mean, I mean, when we started, you know, all we had was the passion. And we really just had a passion for showing that there was an entirely different segment of the African-American population that the news didn't show, that Hollywood didn't show, that the media didn't show. 
And we had a passion about bringing those couples to the forefront and celebrating them and saying, hey, these are couples that are doing it right. These are fathers that are in the home. Instead of focusing all the time on dads that aren't there, what if we lift up the ones who are? Mm -hmm. Because we think that will make others who may not be doing the right thing attract them towards it and make them see what they're missing instead of just, you know, trying to beat down deadbeat dads all the time. So we think we really just, I would say, discovered it during the mission. What, what do you think, Ron? Right. I definitely think, it's, think it started with a passion and turned into our purpose. Like, oh my God, this is what we were meant to do, you know? And then definitely we needed that profit in order to keep going, right? And so I, it started with the passion, went to a purpose, and then therefore, you know, we needed the profit. Yeah, because passion don't pay the bills. <laughs> I got, I got a, I, I got a mortgage, and I don't think Chase is taking that a uh, uh, thousand, two thousand dollars worth of passion not this month. Last time I checked, at least. So you know, you, you definitely have to tie all three. And but you know, it just can't be about money because you know, money doesn't always fulfill you and keep you driving forward. Money doesn't bring everybody a, to rally around your mission where you really need them to rally around your mission in the kind of work that we do. So all three are definitely important. So speaking of Marcus from The Prophet, a great show. At what point did you just want to say, I want to blog because I want to once again exhibit this positive Black family, Black marriage. And then you saw there was the possibility of a business or did you set up the business first in the blog? If you can possibly give some insight about your process and then just emphasize the importance of processes when it comes to business in general. Sure. I think that when we originally started, because... In 2007, the blog scene was not like it is now. So there weren't all these examples all around you. There weren't a bunch of conferences that you could go to in every different niche and have, you know, people in the room that were making six figures or seven figures blog and all these things that you can do now, people you can connect with now, because it really was early on in the progression of that community. So when we started, we said, let's structure this right. Let's treat it like a business in Mm -hmm. case it ever becomes one. But we didn't really have an idea that it could grow. We you were hearing some things about people making money, but you didn't know who those people were yeah. and what they were doing. And you definitely didn't have the type of access that you have today. So I'll definitely say that's how we started up. And, and, you know, I think we have some process. Ron is like our process person in the business. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, definitely process is important. I mean, we didn't have them at first, but then when we began to say, you know what, this is going to be a business, you know, we're going to leave our full time jobs and we're going to have this as a business. And that's when, a lot of the processes really began to kick in, right? Because we really wanted to make sure that we were running this as a business um, and that we were being efficient and and following up on things. So, you know, we have meetings, we have meeting minutes, we have Mm -hmm. plans and schedules, focusing on our financials and all those different things that I think a lot of people think, okay, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm just going to wake up and I'm going to wing it today. (laughs) And that's just not how it happens, especially if you want to take your business to a certain level. You have to be intentional and basically in your processes and in your sales and and all of that in order to to make your business grow. You definitely do. I mean, I know at any time that I can go to Ronnie's desk and I can open up. (laughs) What are you laughing at? My desk? I can go to Ronnie's desk and I can open up a drawer and I can go through the files. And in that files, I'll see a structured spreadsheet of all the shoes she plans on buying from DSW. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we'll the next three. No, that wasn't what that was. That is not okay. what she means. I was okay. not expecting I'm sorry. That. I'm bringing it back, Michelle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I was that good. Mine's just strictly business. I just, I got those documents in order. In your opinion and your expert advice, let me say, for those that do have an idea, maybe they're at their job, they're in that cubicle right now, and they have an idea and, you know, they're side hustling. Would you encourage them to establish the DBA, the LLC right now while they're still at work? Or do you think they should wait until they get a certain amount of consistent income before they put those things in place? I would say, I mean, I'm not an accountant or a CPA. <laughs> I may play one on the web sometimes. Mm-hmm. Catch me on the right blog post. But I, I would <laughs> definitely say, you know, if you're serious about it, you want to treat it like a business, structure it like a business. And then a lot of that work and the activities that you're doing and the money that you're spending, because A lot of times we start spending money on our business before it actually starts coming back in. So I would say those are different things you can actually write off and things you can talk to a tax professional about and actually take advantage of being structured like a business. So I I would definitely recommend, hey, if it's something that you're serious about, you're following it, you know that this is something you want to stick with. I would say go after that structure. Right. And it, it helps. Even in the early days, it helps because when you're interacting with people 
and working with people. It's, it helps to have some type of business and professional structure in place instead of people just coming to, you know, whatever account, you know, like queen mama hair <laughs> account, you know, like a whatever, you know, it's just like <laughs> have it your business name and just have some structures in place. You may not have them all in place, but some of the basic structures from operating as a business, I would say go ahead and have in place. A domain name, a real email address, you know, those, those things are all important. All right, everyone, structure early. So, Lamar, last year I received your book. Well, either 2013 or 14, I got your book. The gatekeepers are gone. Okay, thank you. Oh, definitely. You're welcome. Hustle plus technology equals success. So what made you write this book when you have the established brand of, you know, Black and Married with Kids? You know, I really have a heart for serving others and for helping people. So I help a lot of people that are bloggers that want to turn their blogs into a business. I help a lot of business owners who want to do more through social media and do more on the web. And what I've really pulled the book together from was our own personal experience. And what it really was is answers to a collection of questions that I get the most mm-hmm. from, you know, bloggers who want to go into business or from business owners who want to start blogging and want to start using social media and leveraging that to bring in more customers and more sales. So what I really did, like I said, I crafted a story that really brought all of those different questions together and all those answers. And I said, okay, if I was starting out today in these different industries, so I talk about what entrepreneurs can do. I talk about what bloggers can do. I talk about what what authors or filmmakers can do in the book and how they can take advantage of the fact that right now the gatekeepers are gone due to the rise of social media, the lowering cost of technology. And a lot of industries for the first time ever, the middleman has been removed. And before it didn't matter how good you were. It didn't matter how great your product or service was. If you didn't, I guess, impress that person, or pay off that person or whatever you had to get through that person, you weren't getting to an audience. But now due to social media, we have the ability to to do that. And due to the low cost of technology, we can create amazing content. I can create a film and people come into the movie theater and look at it. It looks just like other movies that they saw the previous week on HBO or on TV or in that same theater. Um, so we're living in a very special time. I wanted people to just really take note of that and to also understand that this time may not be here forever. So no matter where you are, you can take a look at this book and it can be your manual to actually get started in you know whatever it is that you're passionate about. So we're in the information age or information overload age with so much new technology, apps, of course, social media. And in your book, you talk about the crush mentality. And I just kind of find myself battling with that because there's not necessarily, well, myself included, as well as a lot of others, you know, we're in that stage where we kind of want that instant gratification. You know, it's like I've already sacrificed, but I want it now. And it's kind of hard to find that balance. So can you just elaborate on that crush mentality and how people can push through and when they feel that they may be sacrificed enough and they have it? You know, you, you want it now because you're young, Michelle. Young people these days don't want to work hard. No, that, that's what everybody's saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody? I heard that somebody said, you know, I, I moderated the panel like two nights ago, and I'm like, yeah, problem with young people, they don't want to work, <laughs> just want everything. You know, I mean, for me, when I talk about crush, right, I say C R U S H, can't rest until something happens. And for me, the crush was what kept me motivated when I felt like giving up. So, Ronnie and I, we often talk about when we started our blog, I was the IT manager of a TV station in DC. Ronnie was a project manager for IBM, both very demanding jobs. Then we had four kids. Um, all small children in the house. So I had an hour and a half commute back and forth each day from work. So when I got home, Ronnie had a, a stressful day at work. Then she had uh, all four kids on her own to take care of until I got there. Then by the time I got there, it was already dinner time. Then it was bedtime, bath time. And we didn't start working on our business till nine and 10 o'clock at night. So two, three, four in the morning. So it's hard to sustain that when you don't have the passion behind it. That's why we talked about passion earlier, right? And even when you have the passion, there's still times when you're like, is this going to pay off? Is this something people really want to see? Like, am I ever going to be able to actually monetize this and do this for a living? Or am I wasting time? Am I going to fail like this at the thing I fell on two or three years before? And what are people going to think after I've been telling everybody I've been doing these different things? This, these are things that go through most people's minds and we all go through it. But what the crush I say is, is that nervous energy that propels you to move forward. So it can be us being recognized the very first time in Essence Magazine on their website. And that was just a nod to us that, okay, somebody's paying attention. It could be an award that we got. It could be, you know, somebody reaching out on social media who's influential or somebody that we've always looked up to. Or, you know, it could be a pressman. There's so many different things. Sometimes I would just need to watch 
a motivational video on YouTube. And that would kind of give me that crush and, and keep me pushing on. Because what I always say is that what if, you know, you're building something amazing and it takes five years to build, but you give up in year four. What do you get? Mm-hmm. You get nothing. You know, you, you end up with nothing. You don't get an almost made it. You know, you don't get a you came that close. You don't get to reap the reward. So you have to keep pushing. And sometimes you have to find ways to to keep motivating yourself. And that's what the crush is. Yeah, I love it. I've been listening to a lot of Seth Golden right now, his startup school podcast. Yes. And I just finished the episode when he's talking about the dip. <laughs> and I think I'm experiencing several of those dips right now, but just trying to push through. Push through. I was going to say, push through, Michelle. Push through. As a small business owner or entrepreneur, do you think it's possible to separate your personal brand from the company brand? I don't know if you can entirely. I think it depends on what industry you're in, you're okay. in also. So I can't say no, but I definitely think it, it depends on what industry you're in. So that's just my opinion. I don't know, you know, like, you know when you're on, online, for me personally, you know, we have our, our company websites, we have our company fan, fan pages, our company social media, and then I have my own. But at the end of the day, of the day I'm still representing the company and I'm still not going to do something on my personal side that contradicts my brand. And I, so I think, you know, at all times, I do remember that, like, hey, we're black and married with kids, so I can't be out there acting crazy, you know, uh, with Lamar out in the street. So. Talk, 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 stop fussing with me in the grocery store parking lot. Somebody may be watching, and you are going to ruin our brand. We will be on Instagram or something, on Facebook, World Star or something. So I tell us, don't be fussing with me in public. So, you know, to me, it's just like, you, I don't know. You, I don't know if you're going to be able to 100% be able to separate it. I mean, you can definitely have some boundaries. You can draw the line with your time and things that you're doing at home and things of that nature. But when you're out there in public and doing things, I am I just find it very difficult to separate because at the, at the end of the day, you're representing your brand. Whether I'm a real estate agent or whatever, I can't just be out there doing any old thing and not think that it's going to impact my business brand in some way, shape or form. So, Ronnie, do you think that for women, it may be a little bit harder to build and maintain their brand just because of professional appearance and we're held, I think we're held to a higher regard than a man in general? Okay. So what do you mean by professional appearance? Just, you know, look, you know, making sure you're always dressed up, whereas a guy, he can you know, put on jeans and a t-shirt or a bun up. And- <laughs> that's well, that's my brand. Say, okay, jeans so, and t-shirt is my brand. It is, right? It really, really is. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, I think a lot of times women put a lot of this pressure on themselves as mm-hmm. well, right? So we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like even today, Lamar's like, we have an interview today at noon. I'm like, oh my gosh, are they going to see me? What's my hair looking like? I don't want to do it, you know? <laughs> All of that process in five seconds, I went through that whole cycle. So I do think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. I think men, uh, oh, we're going to go out there and we're going to get it. I'm, I'm going to wear a t-shirt. I'm going to wear whatever. So some of that is self-inflicted, I feel. Some of it, women, we judge each other too. Like, what does she have on? Why isn't her hair together? So we do that. You know, <laughs> I think a lot of the times we're getting dressed up because of the thoughts that we, um, of what other women may think <laughs> of us online or when they see us and things of that nature. So there is, some, I think there is something added, some extra pressure. I don't know if it's external or if we're adding to it ourselves as women. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to accomplish, to do things. We study, a, to me, a lot. Like Lamar and I have these conversations all of the time. I will study something inside and out. I will not feel confident in presenting it. Lamar, it'll come to Lamar and he'll say, I got it. I'm going. I'm going with it. You know, <laughs> I don't have to prove myself. I'm taking it. I'm going. I'm presenting it. And so um, I really do think that there is extra pressure, but I don't know if it's always external. I think sometimes we put it on ourselves. So I believe I stated this earlier, Traffic, Sales and Profit, the Facebook group. I have learned a lot from it. I hope people feel like they've learned something from me. I like to contribute, of course. So what made you, one, the title, the creation of that title, as well as the group? And what are your plans with that? Sure. So um, for those who don't know, Traffic, Sales and Profit is a right now it's a free, it's an open group on Facebook and people, you know, you ask to join and, and about once a week or so right now, we're adding people in and getting probably like a few hundred people in it per week now. But what it really is, is a community for entrepreneurs. And the name Traffic, Sales and Profit comes from the three biggest areas I see entrepreneurs having issues with, especially as it pertains to growing their businesses and online marketing. 
So there are people that we run into that have a great product or service, but they're just not getting it in front of enough people. So the issue is traffic. And there are other people who have a flood of traffic. Maybe they're bloggers or they have a popular website, but they're having problems actually converting those readers into customers or converting those leads into customers. And their issue is sales. And then no matter whether you have traffic or sales, everyone is always looking to make more profit and how to increase those profit margins. So what we actually did is we started a uh, tour. We went around the country and did workshops in cities like D.C., Atlanta. Uh, we went to North Carolina. We went to partner with Blog and Brown Conference and did one in Austin, uh, Chicago, and really just, just went on a workshop to help entrepreneurs. It's a uh, self-study system I'll be launching soon as well called Traffic Sales and Profit Online Training System because I've just been noticing that entrepreneurs don't have enough experience when it comes to marketing and sales. And we put all of the focus on, okay, I need this shiny website with all these bells and whistles. And, you know, I need to be on social media, tweeting and Facebooking and, and doing all these status updates and pinning everything. But, okay, like once you do all of that, how are you converting those people into actual dollars? Because, again, the profit is very important. And without the profit, you can't sustain your passion or your purpose. So that's what I aim to do with the Facebook group, Traffic, Sales, and Profit. And it's, it's been an amazing community. Like you've definitely been a great member of our community. And I love it when someone comes in and says, hey, you know, I want the group to take a look at my website, take a look at my landing page and let me know what you think. When people say this is a challenge that I'm having and and other people kind of rally around them and give them resources and support, because that's why I really created that group. So it could be a support mechanism for entrepreneurs and to also show people that there's more out here. A lot of times we need to connect with people outside of our circle to really understand that we don't know what we don't know. So I think that group is a is a great way to do that. So like I said, eventually we'll be transitioning into offering a, a self-study system that we've already developed this in beta now. I get a lot of requests for one-on-one coaching. So we'll probably be doing like a group coaching program or some type of uh, mentorship or mastermind program because I get a lot of requests for that as well. But right now, the core of it is definitely that Facebook group. I love the group. I think one of the things that I love about it is that obviously, you know, Facebook, social media, it's the national presence. Because one thing I've been struggling with is a lot of my friends are not entrepreneurs, so I'm not able to bounce back some of those ideas. So for me to go on to this, you know, online group, online mastermind, and just, you know, share ideas that I'm struggling with and hopefully contribute to others, it's been wonderful. And then connecting with people, you know, personally on Facebook just to keep the conversation going. So thank you for that. Exactly. You're welcome. And you know what? You hit it on the head, right? It's the fact that a lot of us in our circles don't have other entrepreneurs in our circle. So we feel like we're kind of doing this thing alone. And we're on this mission alone and people can't relate to your fears and your ambition and different things. And a lot of times the people closest to us, our friends and our family members really don't understand what we do anyway or why we want to do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, you got that good education. How come you're not just <laughs> trying to get that good government job or, you know, whatever it may be. So you definitely need a community of other people who have like who are like-minded and have the uh, same or similar goals that you can all equip and support each other. So you have the new, new movie coming out, Generation One, The Search for Black Wealth. Why this topic? Why now? I just think it's an extension of the work that we're doing in the community to uplift and to support families in the community. It's definitely a topic that has been weighing on our hearts. We provide you know resources, skills, and tools to families you know, just to strengthen them. And um, finance is a huge area for a lot of couples, right? It's probably one of the top reasons why couples may break up is because of financial issues. And then when you look at our community and when you talk about why now, I mean, just look at, you know, the state of some of the things that are going on in our community and some of the things that are happening to us as African-Americans. And you definitely need to have that community wealth, that economic power in order to make the changes happen. So why now? It's like a perfect time for us to to be talking about generational wealth and the wealth that's within our community so that we we can have the economic power to make some changes and not just, you know, talk about the changes, but have that financial power behind us to actually implement some change. If we don't get that financial power, we'll still be marching 60 years from now. I agree. Asking people, you know, how come you won't treat us fairly? Asking the police to stop, you know, uh, hitting us and killing us and asking, can you please take Confederate flags down? When you have economic power, those are conversations you don't have to have because your money speaks for you. So there's a saying, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. 
What do you think the African-American community can do more when it comes to the decision making process, the economic advantage that we need, whether it's from corporate entrepreneurship or even community activists? And what do you think are some of the action steps we can do to just become a decision maker? So I I think the first thing, like I said, exactly what we're talking about in Generation One, the search for black wealth, you know, is begin to educate ourselves on what economic power looks like, on what wealth creation looks like, generational wealth looks like, so that we leave, when we leave this earth, we leave our children, and really more importantly than that, because our children should be grown, our children's children and their children, something behind. And we're not talking about leaving something behind. We're not talking about leaving debt, mm-hmm. where they have to go around um, asking everybody, you know, for money and asking the church, can they give you money to bury you or, or doing um, social media campaigns? You know, so once uh, we educate ourselves, we can start to build wealth. And then let's start to talk about how instead of spending a trillion dollars like the black community does every year, all outside of our community, how can we bring some of those dollars in so that we can equip and support our own missions and stop wondering why we're not being treated fairly, stop wondering why the schools aren't educating our kids well, stop wondering why these other businesses aren't hiring and, you know, create our own businesses so that we can hire ourselves. So I I think there are definitely some things that we can do from an education standpoint. I think it all starts with education. And then once we educate ourselves, we can start to build wealth. We can start to have economic power. With economic power will definitely come political power. And then from there, we can really start to set some things up that are systems, that are long term, that will last like we talk about for generations. I agree. So with the website, the book, the movie and so many other things. How has networking and strategic collaborations helped you grow your business? You know, networking and strategic collaborations are very important, especially, you know, even even now, but even in in the beginning. I mean, that's just pretty much how we were able to grow. We collaborated with people that were other writers that wanted to come and write on our site. So that was a collaboration, right? Because at first we couldn't pay people. We got out there and we went to conferences. Conferences are very important part of what we do every year from, you know, a learning perspective, but also from a networking perspective. A lot of people ask us, how are you able to work with so many top brands? And we say it's because we've met them at conferences. We got out there and we got our name out there. And then networking is important too, because, you know, a conversation that you have today, a seed that you plant today will will grow and it'll benefit you. And that person will think about you and come back and contact you when they're willing and ready to work with you. And so that has been very important to us in our business. And what are some of the qualities that you would look for when you needed a writer or when you wanted to partner with the brand or just other business relationships? I mean, honestly, just that, that they are in alignment with the mission of the site, right? I mean, we're about uplifting and encouraging and supporting and providing skills. And so we look to see if they're in alignment with the mission and with the topic that we are discussing on the site. And so that goes for people that want to be writers as well as brands, right? And so for the most part, we try to, to stick with brands that are in alignment with our missions, brands that are not doing things to discriminate against the African-American community, brands that are, are focusing on having um, initiatives with our community. And so that's how we focus on the, which brands to work with. And then secondly, um, as far as our writers are concerned, again, are they in alignment with our mission? And then a lot of times they do guest submissions to our site and we're able to see their writing style and if our audience relates to their voice and things of that nature and if they would be a good fit on the site. And so that's how we bring on a lot of uh, writers to the site. Can you identify either one or two influential people that have been significant along this path, perhaps a mentor, a business advisor, a coach? Sure. You know, it's, it's hard to even start because there have been so many people. So on the business side, I would definitely say it's a gentleman. His name is Jermaine Griggs. He runs a company called Hear and Play Music. Hearandplay.com is the website. And Jermaine actually has a program I went through. Actually, has two different programs. I went through both of them. But just learning from him, I learned so much around online marketing and automation. You know, we do a lot around automation. We use a a great tool called Infusionsoft. And we we do a lot around um, automating parts of our business so that we can operate like a a much larger organization than we really are. And that helps bring in more revenue and helps us run more efficiently, helps us provide a better experience to our customers. Right. So I learned a lot of that from uh, Jermaine Griggs. But even when we started out, I mean, two of the people I say, (laughs) was so uh, influential 
to our beginning were just the first two people I called and bounced the idea off of. You know, there were uh, two young ladies. One is Angela Benton. At the time, she had a site called Black Web 2.0. Now she runs the New Me Accelerator um, out in Silicon Valley. And, you know, I called Angela and I said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting this site called BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com. Ron and I, we might uh, kick it off. What do you think? Do you think people would actually come out to it, read the blog? Because we didn't know a lot about blogging at the time. And, you know, she gave me her thoughts. She thought it would be a great idea. Another was Dee Dee Sutton with Clutch Magazine, ClutchMagOnline.com. And I bounced that same idea off of her. So even in the early stages, before we even started, just having people you could bounce ideas off of that were already in that space, that already knew kind of the pulse and the heartbeat of what the readers in that community were. And then even to now, working with people that allow us to advance the business side of what we do, because they've already been there and done that. And, and they are already further along than we are in the journey. So they can easily say, hey, you know, if that's not working, try this other thing, because that may work and it's worked for me in the past. So I definitely believe that, you know, mentorship and when a mastermind group and different things like that are vitally important to the success of your business. You need to be working with someone. You need to have somebody you can bounce ideas off of. You need to have somebody in your circle that knows more than you do. So yesterday, Nicole Bitchy stated that she is exiting her blog. I don't follow celebrity gossip, but I thought that was a pretty big deal because she was definitely, you know, an early adopter to the blogging, especially when it come to, came to celebrity entertainment. Yes. So can you speak on or advise other bloggers about, you know, creating a business from their blog and perhaps setting up an exit strategy, you know, such as, you know, another business would? Because one thing I do like what you said during the conference is that, you know, if you're a blogger, you're an entrepreneur. And I think that really resonated with a lot of people. Yes. Whereas with myself, I think I'm a business person. I just happen to blog. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, for those that, you know, are podcasters that are listening are bloggers, they're writers, and they have this passion, but they don't necessarily know how to turn it into a business. And then the latter part of the extra strategy. You know, and I think, um, and I saw that same news yesterday and you know, I was like, wow, because she's built such yes. an amazing brand. So even though I don't read her site because like, I'm not into celebrity gossip and I don't, I don't really have time to read a lot of different things. Most of the time I'm reading stuff is, is stuff to build our business. But I know I definitely know who she is. I know what she's done. And it's impressive. I don't care you know, who you are, what you do, what that young lady has done is extremely impressive. So I know that as well. And the first thing I thought was, OK, she she's making an exit. And what we oftentimes don't do and what. A lot of times when you specifically talk about African-American community, they don't want you to have an exit strategy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like you build a brand and you have a brand and they want you to keep that brand forever at all costs. And I don't care if the cost is you, if the cost is your, your family to the detriment of your family. I don't care if the brand is crumbling to the ground and, you know, they may or may not even support it once it gets past a certain stage. I mean, how many times have you seen the rallies to, you know, let's save our magazines in the, in the black community? And people, you know, they don't want the magazine to do this. They don't want the magazine to do that. They don't want you to sell out and sell to a larger corporation, but they still don't have a subscription. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely um, admire the fact that, I mean, she's, she's, I don't know her personally, but I, I can just tell, you just watch people moves and know that they're intelligent. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what her next chapter is and what the next step is after this, because I'm sure she has an excellent strategy in place. But it's definitely something to think about, you know, okay, one day, would I ever sell this? Would I grow it and transition to something else? Will I grow this and then start do like mobile them is done with Bossip, right? And will I leverage the first property to build a score of properties actually around that? I mean, I just definitely thoughts that entrepreneurs should have. Yeah, and I just want to encourage everyone uh, that's listening, you know, please Google her, Nicole Bitchy. And she shares her story about how she was sleeping from couch to couch among family and friends. And then someone invited her out to speak. And then from there, she became, you know, a professional speaker and she's sharing her story. And then, you know, once again, she was able to partner with brands. So I just want to encourage people to push at it because that one thing that you do that it can blossom into so many bigger and better opportunities. Yes. So we're about to wrap up here. A um, few questions. Can you recommend a resource or two for our listeners? Maybe an uh, online resource, an app or anything? Sure. I think uh, one we use a lot is Evernote. And most of the time, other people say they already use it, too. But just in case <laughs> someone isn't using it, uh, Evernote is a great resource. We use it to take notes, to share information across uh, the business, to just for like a lot of organization and efficiency. So Evernote is a good one. Ronnie, you got your favorite apps? Um, 
we use teamwork for our project management. There are a lot of different project management tools out there. So, you know, I like that. That's just a personal preference, but there's Basecamp, there are other tools, but we use team teamwork. So I'd say just find a tool that you like and use it and make your plans. I'm yeah. not really stuck on the actual tool that you use. <laughs> yeah, for, for social media scheduling, we use um, Hootsuite. I'm old school Hootsuite. <laughs> Hootsuite OG. <laughs> Still, I got grandfathered in on the... Uh, on the raid, I got the, oh, I'll, I'll never leave, right? I got like a cheap rate, I'll never leave. The early adopter. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? But, uh, <laughs> people are like, but this other one do this other thing. I'm like, nah, I can't leave. <laughs> they family, I need a t-shirt or something. But, uh, but I definitely, um, you know, we, we use Hootsuite for scheduling social media and different things like that. We also use Infusionsoft yes. for our automation and our customer relationship management. And Lamar has a great video at lamartyler.com slash Infusionsoft. To just show how Infusionsoft has taken our business to the next level. Yeah, I mean, it, de- it definitely has. Yeah, I mean, that, that's probably the people say, OK, you know, how'd you really blow your business up? Right. How'd you make a huge transition? Really what it was is we got a system in place. And the, the biggest and best decision we ever made was purchasing Infusionsoft and getting that. So what it is, it's a customer relationship management tool, a CRM tool. And all of our leads, everyone that opts into an email list on our website or buy something from us uh, goes into that system. And then we know who's purchased what, we know who's clicked on what. It gives us the ability to automate a lot of those processes, like I talked about with automation before. And, and we can say, okay, if this person has watched this video, we can make them this offer. Mm-hmm. If they already own this product, we don't have to try to sell it to them again or frustrate them by putting the same thing in front of them. We can actually offer them something that they don't own that may be complementary to the first thing that they already do own or that they've purchased. And it's really allowed us to take our customer service up to another level, our fulfillment, and follow up to another level to really wow our customers. And it's definitely helped us to take care of those people. We were always attracting people, but we weren't really doing a good job once they came to the site. But now we can capture them and then work to actually convert them into customers and have most of that process actually automated for us. So it's not us sending out emails every day and answering different things, but it's always in a process. And if you want to know more about that, you can hear our story with Infusionsoft at uh, www.lamartyler.com slash Infusionsoft. That's great. And we'll definitely have that link in the show notes. Awesome. So what's in store for the next six to 12 months? Well, definitely, you know, we're, you know, we get to away from releasing the next film, like you talked about, Generation One, The Search for Black Wealth, a documentary about the lack of generational wealth in the African-American community and what we can do to build wealth in our homes and community. You know, we're doing on the business side, we'll be launching a traffic sales and profit self-study system. So we're very excited about that. Ronnie Spearhead and another movie that we have coming in a few months about Step families. Right. So, yeah, I'm excited about this. Our next movie that we're releasing is our uh, movie on blended families or, or step families. It's definitely a topic that's near and dear to us because we have a blended family. I had two kids before we got married, and it's an issue or a topic that a lot of families are dealing with because a lot of people are having kids before they get married, and then once they find the one that they're going to marry, then they have a blended family. Or they, at least at a minimum, they need to know how to co-parent with the, um, you know, the person that they're not with anymore and how to date and things of that nature. So I'm really excited about that movie. And, that's, and we're going to um, look to release that in the fall of this year. OK. And the last question, um, how do you define success? We're pointing at each other like, you go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I think that question is definitely a personal question for everyone, right? How do you define success? Him in um, Hall. I, yeah. Give us an answer, honey. Give us an answer. <laughs> I think that's uh, definitely question, something that each, each one teach one, and we have to, uh, each person defines that in a way. What's your answer, girl? What's your answer? Whatever. That's a hard question. You just threw us a curve. No, up. I mean, I agree, right? So, I mean, I've, I've only been in business for two years, and I'm like, you know, am I ses- successful? Absolutely, right? Because I'm not at my nine to five. <laughs> Right, right. I feel like if you're not giving up, if you're not quitting, and I don't think that, you know, like, I don't think if you fail, that's not necessarily not successful, right? I just think that it's what you do with it. Like, are you going to be, if you fail and you're down and out, then definitely I don't find that successful. If you fail, if you learn from it and you get back up and you start again, you know, you reset, you learn from that lesson and and you you move on. So I, I define success as growth. As you know, learning and moving forward, and just keep going. What about you, Lamar? 
Y'all say the same. I say that's a great. Um, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you need your own answer. I would agree. I would say, uh, you know, you don't, as long as you're not failing, you're not down and out. You uh, are if you typically, continue yeah. to move forward. <laughs> if you continue to crush it or crush it. Exactly. You know, continue to crush it. You know, crush it all mine. I mean, I'll crush it and, and move forward. Now, you know, and I, I would just say, I think success is ever evolving. You know, what it evolves with your goals and and your ambition, and I also think a large part of success to me personally is just around freedom and having the ability to do things that I'm passionate about. And that's a level of success for me. So I think, you know, whether you're working for somebody else, working for yourself, whether you're doing the thing you're most passionate about, doing something else, I, I think just doing things that you care about. If you're doing things you care about on a level and you're not doing something that you hate, but doing something that you love, I think you're successful. Well, I definitely want to thank you two for your generous time this evening. I want to thank you for your contribution to the community, giving something single people can aspire to, married couples to admire through your website, in addition to touching on personal finance, entrepreneurship, and just providing us with information that will allow everyone to live a holistic life, as I like to call it. And just want to thank you. Um, It's been an absolute pleasure just to get to know you better within the past couple of months, you know, starting from the book, actually, um, about, Mm -hmm. say, two years, then the Facebook group, and then actually meeting you a couple of weeks ago. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate you having us on and doing the interview. If you enjoyed this episode, I know you did. There was uh, Lamar and Ronnie. They both said a lot of great things, a lot of tweetable moments. So if you enjoyed this episode, I would like to encourage you to share this with a friend, with that friend that is deciding to venture out, to step on their own, that wants to start a side hustle, that wants to take that side hustle into a full-time hustle. I want you to share this episode with them. I want them to be encouraged by what is possible when you take that risk, when you bet on yourself each and every day. If you're driving right now, please go to michellegourmet.com. Right there, you can see the show notes. I want to encourage you to purchase Lamar's book. Once again, lamartyler.com. The book is called The Gatekeepers Are Gone, Hustle Plus Technology Equals Success. All of his links and the items that he mentioned, Fusion Song, all of that will be in the show notes. But once again, I encourage you to share the episode if you receive great value from it. Send me a message online, whether you're leaving a review on iTunes or if you hit me up on Twitter. And remember, a personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.